recent polling on free speech indicates that Democrats are more comfortable with censorship than Republicans or independents. Let's bring in criminal defense attorney and federal litigator Vic Bajaj. Vic, it's great to have you on here. I was kind of reading these polls. You get them from Pew and other places. And it's interesting to me because you have these Democrats that say that they are concerned. They think the government should be doing more to censor misinformation. Of course, they, information they don't like. And that free speech... Free speech, and, and this is a good percentage of them, believe they, that it's not, it should not be legal under all circumstances. Well, that's right, and this is the real danger. If you peel away one layer of this onion trace, what we're going to find is that if you start saying it's okay to curtail free speech, mm -hmm. If you don't align with a certain ideology or if you're outside, if you're the have not rather than the have given certain ideologies, well, you take the risk of groupthink. You take the risk of creating echo chambers and not entertaining auxiliary input like we saw in the Bay of Pigs fiasco and Kennedy so righteously disagreed with. Yep. And that's the real danger. Now, we see that the censorship not only starts with canceling businesses from putting food right. on the table, for supporting people that also pay taxes in the community, but it ruins livelihoods in totality. Forget about your reputation being salvaged in the future, Trace. The damage is permanent and yeah. irreversible. You talk about businesses. Here's the owner of a Vietnamese restaurant in Oakland, California. He's shutting down because of crime. Watch. Some say, stay, fight, fight. I've been fighting. You know, but but no more. This is my city. I love Oakland, you know, and I, I cannot live anywhere else. But I cannot do business in in Oakland. And we hear this again and again, Vic. They can't do business. They love Oakland. I mean, they're the, the NAACP. They love Oakland. They they want to stay in Oakland, but they can't do business there. They can't really feel comfortable there because crime is so high and the city's not doing enough about it. Yes, and it's not as though this could not have been predicted, Trace. This is not as though it's some sort of an epiphany. What this is is the city of Oakland failing to take common sense measures. For instance, the city of Oakland missed the boat and the deadline to apply for organized retail theft funding from mm -hmm. the state of California. Can can you imagine that, being a business owner? That exhibit right. we just saw right there from that restaurant owner should be, I'm living the American dream. I came here to raise my family in a safe environment, and thank you, the United States of America. But instead, it's the American nightmare. Yeah, and I've got about 20 seconds left. I wonder we have video of this. Uh, they found 218,000. You talked about retail theft. 218,000 stolen merchandise in a backyard in Los Angeles. We're talking about Victoria's Secret, CVS, Amazon, Ralph's, Rite Aid. And that's just one site. Vic. I mean, all of these retail cops, for lack of a better term, are, are finding all of this stuff all over California. That's right. Now we're starting to see some of the effects of the Organized Retail Crime Task Force, CHP, was a big player in this bust. Yeah. $218,000, well, that may get you in a state court, but don't forget the feds are watching, and we're going to see numbers of 20 or 30 or $40 million in totality with these organized groups. Dick Bajaj, great to have you on as always. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.